Hi, Lisa Gifford here, and today I'm going to show you how to make our post-surgery comfort pillow. The supplies you're going to need to make our post-surgery comfort pillow is you're going to need our template. You're going to need at least a yard and a third of fabric, so that'd be uh, about 48 inches of fabric. I'm also using our snap pliers with our cam snaps but that isn't optional. You can actually, instead of putting the snaps on here, you can make these little straps longer and they could be loops for your handle. A rotary cutter, you're gonna need needle and thread, some polyfill, and of course a sewing machine. So I got my fabric all laid out in front of me and I got the salvage away from me and I've got the fold as it came off the bolt towards me. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take one end and I'm just gonna fold it over and we'll match up here on the edge. Now the template itself is pretty unique. It actually has a place on it written where it says fold. So if I want to make the exact size of what this template is, I'm just going to set it on here because I'm cutting out two pieces front and back. Now, if I wanted it to be wider than here, because it's adjustable, all I would have to do is just pull it over and I could make it wider to go across. But I'm gonna just make it right here on this edge right here where I've got the fold right here on the fold. And we're gonna cut all the way around. And I'm actually gonna move it up just a little bit so I have some extra fabric. Cause you're gonna have a little bit of extra fabric but you're gonna need some to be able to make your straps that you're gonna put on both sides. Now you could just make it a long loop or you just have handles, or you could use the cams, um, the little cam snaps, so that you would be able to snap it close and carry it that way. Today we're just gonna make it with, um, we're gonna use the cam snaps. So I've got my template on here, and now I'm just gonna cut, and I'm using our 45, and it cuts real easy even as I'm going around this curve. However, 28 would probably work a little bit better going around it. Now, I'm gonna tell you a little story. When I was making my first prototype, as I was coming around, I had actually pulled it out two inches from the fold and I'm cutting all the way around. And then when I got to my fourth side, oh, I need to cut that, and then I cut right off the fold. So that didn't work. <laughs> you need to have that fold there. Now I have my two pieces. So that is the main body of it. And while we got our fabric here, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over. And I'm gonna cut my pieces for my strap. And I like using about three inches. So I'm gonna get two of them cut. I'm gonna use my template. I'm going to square it up right here, get it. And then I'm just going to come over one, two, three inches. And my fabric was still folded. So I should have two pieces here. This is going to be for one strap on one side and one strap on the other. So then all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do it like I'm doing a basic binding. I'm gonna fold it in half, then fold this in and fold this in and then sew it on the, one, on the end and on the side. And then it's gonna go into my piece that we're gonna sew. So that's it being all cut out. So the next step is taking your pieces and you're just gonna lay them out right sides together. Now this is also one of those projects where clips would really work. I didn't mention that at the beginning, but clips or pins to hold it all together because you're just going to be sewing. You're going to lie these right together. Match up your curves and your points. And you're going to pin or clip it. So I want to be able to 
my strap is going to be going right here too. So another thing that I want you to do is on the very end, take it and fold it up and find your halfway point. Just kind of finger press it and then mark that with a pin because you're going to be putting your straps in and you're going to do that on the other side. Fold it up, match your point, finger press it, and stick a pen over there. So what you're going to do in sewing this, I probably will leave a good opening on the bottom. I would say probably about, because you got to stuff it up in all these little areas. So I would probably have about at least a five, maybe a six inch opening here on the bottom. And you're going to sew a quarter of an inch all the way around. When you get to where you have your strap in here, you're going to back tack and you're going to go all the way around. So I'm going to set this aside because we're going to work on that a little bit more. The strap here, I'm just going to fold it in half. And if you have an iron, you're going to press that. You're going to make it like you're doing like a little binding. And then you're going to fold that in and fold the other side in. And then you're going to fold it all together. And then you're just going to sew right down that seam right there. Because this is what's going to get tucked on the inside. So let's go ahead and go to the iron and we'll get this, get these pressed and sewn so we can get ready to put them into the large piece. All right, so the strap pieces are three by 14. They could be whatever size that you want them to be. That's the size that mine actually worked out to be. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get them ready. And then I'm just gonna fold this in and just kind of press it down. And then finish it off by just folding it all together and then give it a good press because then we're going to take it to the sew machine and we're going to sew an eighth of an inch all the way down the side to secure it. The raw edges we're going to tuck into the body of the pillow itself. So this is basically what I'm looking for. I'm going to go ahead and do it again with this one. So basically this is all the prep work that you really have to do because these pillows go together very quickly. I think what takes the longest is just your hand sewing. And I just do a simple ladder stitch just to close it all up and after you get it all stuffed. This is where I should be using an iron, buddy. Keep my fingers from getting burned. And I've got that seam started and give it a good final press. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the sew machine and I'm going to sew an eighth of an inch all the way down on both of these straps. And then I'll be bringing them to this piece and getting it all pinned and we'll have that sewn at the sew machine. Okay, so I've got my straps ready to go and I'm just gonna sew a simple eighth of an inch all the way down on the sides of where I have the two pieces folded in. So I'm just an eighth of an inch on the two folds.
Okay, so we're going to go back to where I'm going to get these set into the body of the piece. So before I go any further and get it all pinned together to sew, I want to say that this would be the time that you would want to do any applique or any embroidery on the body of your pillow before you do that, before you sew it all together. So you would have this piece right here. What I had done when I did my applique is I did have some tearaway stabilizer under here so I could just pull it off after I got it all sewed together. And I just did the, um, these templates here. This is our ribbon templates. I cut out my pinks and my black, laid them on here with a little bit of fusible web, and then I put the stabilizer, the tearaway stabilizer underneath it, and then I just did a blanket applique on all of them. So you would do that first if you're going to do any embroidery and applique before you do this, before you sew it together. And I'm going to tell you it's very important to use that stabilizer because it's going to keep it from puckering and drawing in because if you do one side and you don't do the other, it's going to change the size or the shape of that one piece. So by having that stabilizer under there, it's not going to draw it in. Learn that one the hard way. So Here's my pieces now. I'm not doing any decorative on this one at all. And I remember how I had it all laid out here and I found my middle by folding it in half and I marked a pin right there. So what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out. Now I've got my piece right here. I'm gonna go ahead and loop it. It's your preference on what you want to do. You could have it as a single piece and it'd be long where you could tie it behind your back or you could have the loop if you want it to be a handle, you could put a cam, cam uh, snap on this. I'm just gonna have the handles and I'm gonna show you how to do the cam stamp, the, uh, the cam snaps. So I'm just centering then right here where I had that little crease and I have it on the inside and then I'm bringing my fabric back over top and then I'm gonna go ahead and place my pin there. So when I go to sew all this around, I'm going to back tack over this piece right here probably at least twice. Sew forward, backward, forward. That way it's going to give it a little bit more strength right here because that's where it's going to be pulled on a little bit. And then I just like to put some pins and just, or some clips in just some of these strategic places where you're going to need possibly everything being held together. Don't need a ton of them, just a few just to kind of hold it. It feeds through because it's the exact same size quite easily. And I'm gonna go over here to this piece right here. This is our center. I'm gonna fold it back, get my second piece, loop it in, place it right there on the center of that mark where we had it where we had done the little finger pressing, lining up my raw edges, and then pull this back over, lining up my edges. Move just a little bit. And then just pin that. And then I'm going to continue getting some of the other places pinned. I found it was easier just using some pins or clips because to go around that curve, sometimes your fabric wants to shift a little bit when you're going around it. Now, another thing um, is I like a lot wider opening here. Because if you make it too small, then you're really having to get your arm in there to stuff and fill all these little crevices. So I found it's a little bit easier if I had a wider opening here. One more pin. Now I'm going to sew it a quarter of an inch. I'm going to start here, go all the way around. And when I get done sewing it, I'm going to clip my corners. So you're going to have a corner here, here, 
clip corner here, here, here. Let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you got eight corners that you're going to clip. And then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to notch this or you know, put my little clips in here because this is a pretty defined curve right here. And if you don't, it's going to look all wrinkly right here when you get it, when you go to stuff it. So just take the time to do your little bit of clips or notches, however you prefer. Or if you have some pinking shears, you could run those pinking shears on that seam. And that's going to give it this nice smooth look for that curve. Okay, I got this all pinned, so we're going to go ahead and go to the sewing machine and get started. All right, so I got my, uh, my piece at the sewing machine. I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch all the way around. If you wanted to go a half inch, you could do that too, but I'm doing a quarter. And I've got my machine set up at um, 1.8. I'm working on the Janome M7. When I start, I'm going to do a back tack, and then I'm going to just go all the way around. When I get to my corners, I'm just going to pivot. I'm not going to sew off, I'm just pivoting. Now I'm coming up to the first strap and I'm just going to back tack over top of the straps. That will give it some extra strength. Now when you're going around your curve here, just make sure your strap is not in the way particularly if you have a really long strap that you don't end up accidentally sewing it. Okay, so I've left my opening, and I think I got about a good eight inches here. It could be a little bit less, or it could be a little bit more. Just remember, you got to get your arm in there to, um, to, to stuff it. So now I'm going to go ahead and just clip my corners, and I'm just being very careful. Uh, and this is a preference. I mean, you don't have to clip them, but if you want a little bit of a sharper point, just go ahead and clip. Just be sure to not cut your, uh, clip your stitches. Just be very careful. Yeah, I think that should be all of them. Now, before you turn it, you're going to clip this curve. Now, again, if you have some pinking shears that you want to run here and clip these curves, you can very well do that. But if you want it to lay nice and flat, I recommend you use the picking shears or that you clip it or notch it, whatever your preference is. I think I'm doing a clip about every half of an inch or so all the way around. Being careful to not um, cut your stitch. And I recommend doing this on a flat surface. And I'll tell you why, because I was doing this on my lap. And as I'm clipping away, I clipped a hole in my leggings. <laughs> so that wasn't good. So yeah, have a nice flat surface. And again, I'm going about a, about a half and an inch all the way around. And they were new leggings too. I just got them. Okay. And you can see the reason for that. It just lets the fabric relax a little bit for when you're going to have that curve. So see how if you're going to be, it's just going to make it so that it's going to be a nice, smooth instead of all wrinkly versus if I was to do it on the other side there's just not much give it's just a lot tighter Now, I have seen some people where they actually cut out little notches, and you can do that. But I'm just doing these little clips here. I'm using our little precision scissors, and they are so sharp. They're perfect for this kind of an application. 
you don't have our precision scissors, I recommend you get them. They are just amazing. Probably one of my favorite tools. Okay, again, gives it that nice, not tight feel. All right, so find your opening. And you're just gonna reach in here. And you're just gonna pull it out on both sides. And I didn't bring my little tool with me, but you're gonna push out your corners. And I like using that little iron buddy to do that with. It's got the perfect little point for that. Get all your corners all pushed out. I do not have one here. I have mine at home. You got eight corners you got to you know, push out. So you just get them all pushed out. Just be careful so that whatever you're using, you don't poke a hole through it, damage that fabric. And I suppose you could use other fabrics instead of just regular cotton. I think this would be very nice to be done with a minky or something soft like a flannel. I think would work very well with these. And then when I get done here, we're gonna stuff it and I'm gonna to talk to you about different kinds of polyfill or stuffing that you could use. All right, so that's everything all pushed out and here is our handles. So you can leave them with just the handles or you can put a cam, um, cam snap on here. All right, so before we go ahead and stuff it, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna put the snaps on. So I've got my two end pieces here and I'm just kind of bringing them to me into the front. And I kind of want them to overlap. So I'm gonna want a cam snap on one side and then a, a, a snap over here on the other. So this is how I want it to snap over. So with your cam snap tool, you're gonna to need your tool and you're gonna need two of the thumbtacks. I'm doing the yellow. So you have two that looks like thumbtacks or th there are pieces in there that look like thumbtacks. I need two of them. And then I have two other pieces, one that is called the male and one that is called the female. So since I kind of want my straps to overlap if I'm gonna snap them in, I know where I want them to be is right here. So I'm just gonna open this up a little bit and I'm gonna get my little thumbtack piece and I'm just gonna kind of push it through the fabric. And it should go right there. If you need to, you could go ahead and pre-make that hole with like a sharp point. But I found that these tacks are actually work pretty well if you just kind of wiggle it a little bit and the point will go through. And then I'm gonna take either the male or the female and I'm gonna lay it on top of that point of the tack. Then I'm gonna take my tool and I'm gonna lay the flat edge, the top of the thumbtack, and it's gonna go right here on this black section right here inside the pressing tool. Kind of center it on there and just give it a good squeeze. What it is doing, it is taking the point of that tack, the point here, and it's smushing it. You can see where it does it right here. It smushes it so it stays into here, so it does not come out. So to make sure I got it lining up correctly, I'm just gonna go ahead and lay it on here. All right, see where I want it to be. So now I know it needs to be on this piece so my tack is gonna be on the inside going up. So I'm just kinda of laying it in here about the same distance of what I had it on here. And just kinda of wiggle it with my finger thumb until I can get that point of the tack to go through. And before I put it on there together, I'm checking again 
making sure that's where I want it to be, making sure it's lining up correctly. Then I'm going to take the, either the male or the female, which one you haven't used, set that on there here through the point of that tack, and repeat that process again where I'm going to lay the top of the tack onto the black and then just kind of line it up here. When I have it lined up, I'm going to give it a squeeze. It flats out on that point so that that is now on there. And then I'm just going to test it. And that's how I want it to be. So you could have it as that or you can either use it as a strap. I mean just handles just to hold it like that. So now that's showing you how to use uh, the Martelli snap pliers with the cam snaps. Now I want to take a minute and go over the fillings. Now there are all different kinds of fillings that you could use for these pillows. There's the polyfill, Martelli has the fiber fill, I think it's the fiber fill that we have. Um, there's really soft stuff, there's more dense stuff. Knowing that this is a surgical pillow, I would recommend having a softer, maybe even more of a cushiony, bouncy type of a filler in here. Um, but you can do whatever preference that you want. This one here is just filled with polyfill and it's got a little bit of a bounce. It's not packed real tight. It's kind of a loose packing in here. And then all of I did once I got it filled was I just did a simple ladder stitch or you could do a whip stitch just to close it up. And once you got it closed up, then you're finished. This one here, we filled with the Martelli fiber fill. Now it is super soft, but it is a little bit denser. It's a little bit heavier. So it's going to be, do you want something that's got a more of a tighter, denser feel to you? or do you want something that's a little bit more bouncy or soft? It's going to be your preference on what it is that you want. And this one's done the same way. Once it's filled to your specifications, then you just do whatever a uh, whip stitch or a ladder stitch. I do have another one that's filled that's even lighter filled. So you can do, you got to grab that one. All right. So here's one that is just lightly stuffed. It's a very, very loose in here so you could do lots of looseness and this is showing you here like if you have a port we've added like another square on top like if you want to have a little bit more protection like if you have one of those permanent ports that are in or if you want to cover protect something from a seat belt you can add this but I didn't go into details on that one today I've got this third one here or this fourth one this is just showing where I had done another decorative um, applique on here with a uh, generic cancer ribbon and this one's actually more tightly filled with the polyfill and once I got it filled pushing all the way up into the corners and everything then again I just did my simple ladder stitch and when you do a ladder stitch you can't already see it and there's so many videos online uh, if you just go to YouTube and type in ladder stitch, there's some great videos that gives you great detail on how to do a ladder stitch and how it actually makes it look like it just disappears. So I wanted to go over a little bit about the polyfill. If you want something that's a little bit firmer or denser, I mean, the, um, our polyfill or our fiber fill is just amazing for pillows. It's got a dense, it doesn't lose its shape. It's a great, it's super soft. But if you want something that has a little bit more bounce and you might want to get something like the polyfill that has a little bit more pounds. All right, so here's the two different fills that I was just talking to you about. This here is the polyfill. And if you notice, it has more of a bounce to it. I mean, we've seen this for years. It's just a great product, but it has a little bit more of a cushy bounce to it. This is our fiber fill. Feels like holding a cloud. It's super, super soft, but it doesn't have as much bounce. It's a little bit more dense. So whichever you prefer to use, you're going to just take it, and I'm going to show you if I was taking the polyfill, I'm just going to find my opening and I'm just going to work it. I like to fluff it up, whether I'm working with the polyfill or the fiber fill, I fluff it up a little bit and I take handfuls of it at a time and I go to the farthest point and I just kind of push it to fill those corners. 
and I just keep working as I get more and more filled. A lot of times I'll have baskets of this polyfill already fluffed up at home while I'm watching TV and I'll just fluff up some of these stuff and then I will just have it ready to go for when I'm going to start needing it and I just start filling. And it's up to you if you want it to be really dense or if you want it to be really loose. But that's just, all you're going to do is just going to keep filling it. It takes a little bit of time just to fill it all in. Or if you're using this one here, same way, you're just going to take little handfuls at a time. Work from the furthest distance first. And that's going to be the closest to the strap. And you're going to work it in and then kind of push it up into those corners and just keep working little handfuls at a time till you get it completely filled. And then when you have it the way you like, then you're just going to whip stitch it close or use that ladder stitch. Do not overfill it. It's going to have, you're going to have a hard time stitching it and your stitches might pull. Thank you so much for joining me today as we made the post-surgery comfort pillow. And this is how it looks. It's not that hard to make, very simple to do with just very little tools to make it with. It will be a joy to you or whoever you might want to make this for. You can always check us out at martellinotions.com. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at quiltingwithlisa at gmail.com. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.